this blend is based primarily on Pinot Noir, which is a very, very precocious brandy. It shows well, well, I mean, so, uh, you know, the Eau de Vie, when it comes out of the still, it's clear, it's white, it's very vivacious, very fruity. I mean, it's just, you get excited every year when you begin the distillation season and the new Eau de Vie is coming and, and they're, they're, they, they just sort of revive your, your energy after a long year of working in the shade. The brandies, when they go in, they go into new oak for some period of time. They need to interact with active oak. It doesn't have to be brand new oak. Actually, I prefer if it's not brand new, um, but uh, it has to be active. So the, the, the brandies need to interact with that tannin in the wood, and mm -hmm. these young, you know, nasty brandies need to sort of fight it out with the young, nasty wood. And after about a year, or a little less than a year, that bright fruitiness has extracted enough tannin from the wood that it really isn't so bright anymore. And the tannin is is it's Ooh. still harsh on the palate. And you know, if you didn't so this know, is when you transfer that to to an older to an older cask, maybe. Yeah, this is when you're a new distiller and you haven't really worked in a shea anywhere else before that you're convinced you've destroyed this wonderful uh -huh. brandy. Well, now and you know better. Now you know better. In cognac, they say the brandies die. And, and, and that would be the point at which, a little before that actually, that we would transport it to a neutral barrel, a barrel mm -hmm. that's seen brandy in it for more than 15 years. It still is going to act as the right vessel for the oxidation and evapotranspiration mm -hmm. through the wood, uh, also adding the decay elements of the wood, interacting with the brandies. Mm -hmm. um, but yet, when we transfer them, they're very awkward. They're very unattractive and uh, this is this is not quite exactly the kind of nose that I'm used to when I smell young cognacs is it because of, of the wood or is it more because of the grape it's more because of the grape and when we okay. taste that the the, the the grand champagne a young grand champagne I mean it has the terrible I mean mm. if I, you could open up a grand champagne here and boom you and I would both know mm. where that where mm. that came from we don't really know yet in California we haven't really established terroir in that sense. Mm -hmm. We've established a style, and we, I mean, I'm including myself, that's a, maybe, that's, maybe that's a bit rude, but certainly... Well, it's not too many of you producing brandy of, of great quality. No, but the style was originally developed by Hubert Germain Robin. The experiments that he did in the early 80s with Pinot Noir, with, uh, with Viognier, with uh, Sauvignon Blanc, with Chenin Blanc, with, with Colombard, mm -hmm. really, and then the style of blending was really set in form this style of brandy, which I call California Alembic brandy. So we experimented with as many different barrels as we could. We used American oak sourced from a number of forests, you know, in Virginia, in Kentucky, in Minnesota. We had that wood aged in American places on the East Coast, on the West Coast, aged in cognac, coopered in cognac. All those barrels came into the Shea. We, we, we did those tests, and in fact, none of them, none of the American oak tests really could support and emphasize this type of fruit structure that we get. And so all the... But was it, was it all the white oak or, or maybe some other oak species? It was primarily white oak. Um, okay. But... Uh, But and, and was it and was it uh, toasted? Was it heavily toasted? Was no, it so we, we did range of toasting, but they were all air dried a minimum of 36 months. That was the requirement. Mm -hmm. The toasting level was typical for what we use, but we use a range of toasting from some light toasts to some heavy toasts. Mm -hmm. Actually, the shea. I, I mean, we use we use everything in between. I mean, maybe you would say that the that the the most common toasting level uses a medium plus, but we have. A fair amount of very very deeply toasted barrels, and and we use a fair amount of of uh, lightly toasted barrels, not toasted heads. I just right. I'm sort of classic in that way. So untoasted. And so heads. then you're saying this is in the past, and now you, you you're so using another now. Another wood? The, but from those tests, we really moved to 100% French oak. All right. And so we say we're 100% Limousin, but today in France. Limizon yeah. means something a little bit different. What it means really is this is the fine, the fine grain, the wide or, grain, or the wood. wide grain. Yeah. yeah, and so that can be Vosges, that can be Limizon, but really we're talking about wide grain oak that's mm -hmm. aged. We classically say 36 months, but we're working with some producers that have regimes of caring for the staves in their stave yard where they can achieve a softness in the tannin a bit before that 36 month okay. period, and so it's not. 
it's not hard and fast, but conceptually, that's the flavor profile we're looking for is those three to six months. Eight. And too much past that three-year stage and you lose something from the stage. But again, here we're talking about the wood. The wood itself, before it's ever touched any brandies, has undergone an aging maturation process mm -hmm. in the stave yard, growing those organisms on the stave, softening the tannins, producing something that's going to harmonize with these brandies and produce mm -hmm. this thing. And, and I think the way to think about it, I and mean, we're talking about the varietals and we're talking about the terroir and we're trying to understand, you know, what is this thing? And uh, So it's an ongoing process. That, that, yeah, and you, are you tasting every day? Are you going to the Shea every day and not smelling every day, and tasting? No, but not every day. But, but every other day. <laughs> well, no, I mean, it's hard. We'll go through. So, for instance, in the summertime, we don't taste. Um, because the the brandies are undergoing, they're working very hard in the summertime, and they get you have great variations of, of temperatures and, and humidity level in in the cellars. Not great, but enough that enough of a, a enough of a of a not so much diurnal because our shea was made with very thick walls. So we put on, for instance, this year we added a new shea, a new moist shea with um, something with with straw bale walls plus added uh, uh, concrete on either side. So we have a couple inches of concrete and you know maybe a couple feet of straw. Mm. So the, the insulation and with a living roof. So that's really keeping things very stable mm -hmm. throughout the day. But there are these slow, you know, yearly fluctuations yeah, between yeah. the slightly drier, hotter summer and the wetter, yeah. cooler winter that drive the oxidation, they drive the aging process in the mm. brandies. And in the summertime, they're always a bit awkward. And so when you taste yeah. in the summertime, your impression of the brandies is always not right. It has so nothing to do with, uh, with the fact that you, you're drinking a lot of rosé wine during the summer and it affects your palate. That's one theory. We, and, and what, so about, what about the name? Osicalis uh, is the original mm. name of the town where the distillery is based. So it, today it's called Sokel, but the original name is, is, is Osicalis. So we just... In fact, we thought if you're going to call something Armagnac or Calvados or Cognac, then I guess you need to call it a <laughs> right? That's right. No, it's a great, it's a great name. Is there any native Indian um, the hard part meaning that, that behind that? I don't know, and that was lost. And, and so, and it turns out that if we would have been, you know, one village over to the right or to the left, it would have been a classic Spanish or American name. But well, ours was an Indian name, which actually a lot of that's been lost. And there actually are a number of different spellings. We chose one of the more common ones, but it, it, it's not, we don't claim it to be correct by any means. So this is a slightly older blend. Mm. It has more colomba, it has more depth. It starts to, you start to see the rancio. And the, the predominant here is these citrus, these dried citrus peel uh -huh. yeah, yeah. elements. The Quite a bit of almond too, and it's almond. Mm -hmm. There's a bit of tobacco, and these large glasses, I don't quite get as much of the tobacco and the cocoa and the the dried walnuts, but the dried walnuts for sure are in there. So we see these are characters that are developed only through the interaction of the barrel and the brandies. They don't. They're not. These are these are notes that are not present in the eau de vie. Mm -hmm. They're not really present in the young brandies. They develop over time in the barrel with the interaction of the brandies with the wood. And so, I like to say that, you know, we think of these brandies sometimes as being strongly influenced by the wood, but they shouldn't be. It should be different. The brandies start their lives in the vineyard, as we said to begin with. And those grapes, if we're good, we should be able to make wine that has the varietal character. And if there is something there, mm. maybe the terroir of the region where they came from, and the wine should reflect that. But it's not grape juice. It's wine. It's something new, very new, but but connected to, to, to those things. And then when we take those wines and we distill them, we produce eau de vie, which should still retain the varietal character. If there was anything like terroir, it should retain the terroir. But then we put them in barrel and we create something mm. that's very new. And this is the thing that we think of as great brandy. It's something that's uniquely developed through these processes over very long periods of time. Well, the nose is, is fabulous. The nose is really fabulous. But so now, it, say I'm, 
I'm a consumer and I go, I go to the liquor store yeah. uh, or I go to a bar or, or a restaurant and I ask for an American brandy. For the bartenders, for the sommeliers, yeah. um, for for the liquor for the for the liquor shop uh, attendant, what, are they supposed to even understand this category? And can they actually say, "Well, hold on, you've got the well volume brandies, and you've got the alambic brandy." Is that how it is understood now? Where are we it's, going in terms of of categorization? I guess. Well, that's why we use the term alambic brandy really to set ourselves apart from those larger brands that don't use the traditional method de Charon, that aren't using all these traditional aging and blending techniques. Um, you're thinking, so you're thinking of, those, of those brandies that are, are using just maybe more um, the leftover grapes, maybe the continuous distillation, it's, maybe ex-bourbon barrels for, for, for there maturation. There are some that use ex-bourbon barrels. There are many use ex-bourbon barrels, and you can taste that in the note. But some of the barrels are so neutral um, that that, that's okay, but predominantly the two the differences that them apart are using the very, very inexpensive fruit that we have a huge abundance of in California that's in the main Central Valley. Mm. The price difference between the fruit in the main Central Valley and where we get our fruit from is about a factor of five. I mean, what would you say is the ideal temperature? I like them um, in and about cellar temperature. I like them at sort of standard room temperature. So that's something um, in sort of the, the 60s, you know, okay. the mid 60s. If it's a little more than that, it's too volatile. Mm -hmm. And so we'll put them in smaller glasses mm -hmm. if it's hot outside. Um, if it's colder than that, we'll put them in larger glasses so that we can actually get some of the aromaticity back out. But with brandy and with sipping brandy, you're always fighting a balance between the alcohol is very important. It lifts the nose, it lifts the the, the cogenere out of the glass and into the nose, and yet it can be a bit much. So we're always fighting being able to smell and enjoy mm -hmm. them without too without too much alcohol, um, while still using the alcohol as 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 a as a, as a, a moderator of the mm -hmm. aroma internal. So. You know, depending upon the temperature, we'll either change the glass a little bit or change the temperature. So I like them in the 60s. Um, when the shade is too cold, you know, in the winter, you know, we really have to heat them up to uh -huh. get the aroma. And that's actually fun because if you've ever done that, if you've ever taken a cold brandy, something that's in the 45 or 50, and you put your nose in the glass and smell it, it's a very different beast mm -hmm. than if you, if you just wait a couple minutes and warm it. And you can find that real sweet spot where... You get really the character of the brandy and not yet the alcohol. And then as it warms up further, you'll find, oh, you know, what, what, what happened? I, well, it's been distributed already now. We're lucky because it's, it's, it's a few months already yeah. in New York. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so uh, when you go to the right liquor stores, definitely you can, you can find the Osocalis. Um, these, two, these two, but uh, you've got more. We have two more. We have, um, well, we have our apple brandy, yeah. That, that, yeah. and we have one more, our heritage, which is a blend of um, really the oldest brandies in the shape, which really emphasize um, the, the, the character of the Rancy on the development of, of California Alembic brandies in barrels. And we have one more that we'll be releasing before um, this winter, which is a very special bottling of a single barrel um, Pinot Noir, a very old one, that we're producing the label with an artist friend of mine here in New York. So it's a very limited, very special bottling of a, of a, a very classic barrel of, of California Olympic brand. All right, so, well, now you know uh, what to look for very shortly. He said, he said so before the winter. He did. Dan, thanks Thank a lot. Thank you so much. It was Thank really you. a pleasure. And is it Santé then? Santé. Santé.